Hey guys, welcome again. I'm gonna show you today a video on how to retip stones that are semi-precious and precious stones and CZs and so forth. So retipping is a very important part of uh, the jewelry industry. So a lot of times when the prawns are worn down and you wanna retip on them, if you don't have a laser, unfortunately, if you have a semi-precious stone, you can't actually retip on it. But there's actually, there is a way to do it if you know how to operate the torch. If you notice, I showed that big, huge torch earlier. Do not use that, a big torch like this. And I've seen some jewelers, they use like a big torch, maybe, a, you know, medium size, but it's still, it's too big. So I always use this mini torch and I always make sure you use a good size tip. Um, you know, this is a size six here. I mean, if you wanna go, go smaller, you can, but it's all about control of the actual tip and how you control the torch, like I explained before. So what I'm gonna do right now, I put a CZ in here. So you come a little closer, okay? So I stuck a CZ in here, so we're gonna give it a little test, okay? So I wanna show you how I'm gonna retip the prawns. I'm just gonna do one or two, but when you do it, it's very important, back up a little bit. So it's very important when you do it that you don't heat directly on the, on the actual stone like this. So now you come a little closer. I'm not lighting it up yet, but don't directly heat on it. So if you're retipping one of the prawns, it's very important that you tilt your torch. So the torch has to be sitting this way. So for example, if I'm retipping this one, you want your torch like this. So if you notice now that the tip of the torch goes here, so you wanna go, let the heat hit just the prawn, not the actual stone. And never ever, if you have a semi-precious stone, for example, back up, uh, if you have a CZ, if you have actually a blue topaz, if you have an amethyst, citrine, opal, emerald, and so forth, um, it's, you gotta do it super fast and you gotta keep your heat on the outside of the prawns. You can still re do it, but you have to be super fast and you gotta be very cautious. I'm gonna give you some tips on that. And um, like if you work on sapphires and, um, and rubies and things like that, those are referred to as corundum. Corundum, anything that's corundum family, you could actually heat on it directly. But make sure you never ever dip it in water. So let that stone cool down. Even though you could heat a, a an actual ruby and, um, and sapphire directly, but you could never put it in the water, you will crack it. Like on synthetic stones, you could actually retip on them. Again, you could heat on them directly, but you never ever put it in the water because you will crush it. So same thing with the semi-precious stones. You could do it, but make sure you let it cool down on its own. It takes a few minutes, it's better that way, but you could, uh, you could actually heat on it directly. So I'm just gonna give you a little example, okay? So we're gonna go into the actual prawn. I think this is extra easy, something I make, okay? I don't buy it. So, so we're just gonna cut a few prawns, okay? And let's say we're gonna just retip it here, okay? So let's just retip this. Let's make them all even, okay? So they kind of look the same. All right. So here's your, your your actual solder. I'm gonna bring it down here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm never gonna put the actual flux on it because from the heat, when you heat on it, the water or the flux is gonna bubble up and it's gonna crack the stone. So I actually put it on the actual piece of solder, okay? So I try to avoid as much, you know, water on there as possible, like even if it's alcohol, still considered water, okay? So anything that's water-based, it's gonna create that CZ to crack or any other stone, you wanna avoid that. So I'm gonna use the tip, make sure the tip is very uh, clean. So when I bring the torch, the heat is very quick. So I'm gonna adjust it. Okay, you can see here. So now watch the way I pick up the solder. So when I bring in the solder here, okay, I pick up my ball here and I just swipe it. You can see how I picked it up. Okay, it's very simple. So now as you do it here, while it's hot, you pick up the solder. You can see it, can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my heat, like I said, only the side of it, okay? Just the tip here like this. Never directly go on it, because I'm not gonna do it, because you will crack it. So watch, I'm gonna increase my, um, my actual solder now, I mean, I'm sorry, my uh, the oxygen. So I'm gonna increase it and I'm just gonna bring it in right to the actual tip here and it's done, okay? So what happened is by increasing the actual heat, okay? You could, you could, you're gonna be able to like, if I could do it this way, I will crack it. So let's say I go this side. Usually I like to turn it around, okay, and it's done. So you can see how quickly that was done. Zoom in on it so they could see it. Bring it all the way in. Okay. okay, so we're gonna wait a few seconds, then we're gonna put it in the actual water. Or you can just clean it up. 
But usually, back up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna touch it, and I wanna show it to you. It's still a little warm in my hand here, okay? So it's pretty good now, all right? And you can see, absolutely nothing happened to the actual stone, okay? And I actually read up, you can see, bring it in. Nothing happened to the CZ. And normally, if I would have heated it directly, I would have cracked that CZ. If I put it in water, 100%, I will. So same thing with the actual stones here. Like I pulled out some stones. These are all genuine stones. You get the actual, you, you get the garnet, amethyst, and you get an emerald, and you get a citrine here. So if I would do it, same, same idea. So let's say, for example, I go on the amethyst, and I heat the stone. So you can see it takes enough heat that you could re-tip it. Okay, but if, watch how I bring the actual heat into it, but don't overdo it because it's, you're gonna start losing the color. So you only wanna hit the metal, not the actual stone. Because if I just go here, you can say goodbye to it. So same idea, you can see I just heated on that stone and I could go here, I could bring it in, you can see it's taking the heat, nothing happened to it, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing with the an actual garnet. I'm gonna do it here and you can see nothing happened to it. And I'm going to do an emerald. Now, if I was working on it, nothing happened to the emerald. So if I was actually working on the prawn, you can see how quickly I could actually re-tip these prawns. So let's do one more here, Kayla. And I'm just going to go here. Let's go pick this up. So if I had a stone there, and here, yeah, this is the CZ. I'm going to give you one small example. It's how I crank the oxygen just to here. I bring it in. Boom, it's done. Okay, finish. So bring it in. All right, so back up a little bit. And uh, thank you for watching. I hope this will help you. But don't think because if you don't have a laser, you cannot retip stones. Even if they were smaller, you could do it. As long as you keep your torch, you control it, and you should be able to do it, no problem. But any other stones, you could do it as well. On diamonds, you could actually dip it in the water. I mean, just be careful, you gotta, I hope you, you know, you have a little bit more experience with that. If you hit on a diamond, you can actually dip, dunk it in the water. I've done it a thousand times, but I don't recommend it to anybody that's not experienced with it, because you don't wanna crack somebody's stone. But a lot of times when I do re uh, diamonds, I can just dunk it in the water. And it actually helps it, because if any dirt stuck to it, it's gonna fall off of it. But any other stones, let it cool down. You can see I did re a CZ. I hope that helps. See you next time.